This building is considered to be one of the most beautiful structures in New York City. It's located in Lower Manhattan, south of the Bowling Green, New York's oldest park. The building was designed by Cass Gilbert, a prominent American architect from Ohio, and was finished in 1907. It used to be the Alexander Hamilton U.S. Customs House. Today, it houses the Smithsonian's Museum of the American Indian. Inside, you will see the arts of the native inhabitants of both North and South America. This architectural style is termed Beaux-Arts. Its influence is strongly European and it's supposed to have a didactic effect on those who look at it. Since the building was meant to house an organization dealing with international commerce, the sculptural program deals with related themes. The works I want to focus on are the four groups of sculptures situated on the front facade of the building. They were created between 1903 and 1907 and are called the Four Continents. American artist Daniel Chester French, known throughout the world for designing the monumental sculpture of Abraham Lincoln for the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C., created these works. These sculptures are anthropomorphic representations of the populated continents of this earth, and the symbolic details emphasize cultural characteristics of those places. They are also reflective of the cultural attitudes of the West at the beginning of the 20th century. If you stand in front of the building, the first image to the left represents Asia, a seated female figure with her eyes closed in meditation. Her dress conforms comfortably to her body. Her right hand holds a lotus flower with a serpent wrapped around its stem. The lotus flower is symbolic of purity, while the serpent is symbolic of rebirth. On her lap we see a figure of a Buddha, Cass Gilbert, regarding this figure, stated, In the lap of the figure is the idol, symbol of false worship, while above the right shoulder is seen the rising luminous cross of Christianity, symbol of hope, which found its birthplace on the continent of Asia. Looking to the left side, we see a representation of a tiger. It represents the transmutation of anger into wisdom and insight. It also offers protection to the meditator from outside harm or spiritual interference. Below her feet, if you inspect the work carefully, you will see a series of skulls. Skulls are reminders of death. By supporting the anthropomorphic representation of Asia, this could mean that the continent's grandeur is on a foundation that can no longer provide what it was once able to. This idea is further enhanced if you look to the right of the work. Here you see figures that appear to be slaves or attendants. They appear void of vitality. Keeping from the left, next to Asia is the representation of America. It is centrally located and out of the four figures it is the only one that is active in appearance. She is seated but appears to be about to spring and stand up at any moment. Her visage is that of a young woman and her eyes are wide open. Like liberty enlightening the world not far away, she holds a torch on her right hand, symbol of liberty and its fire symbolic of knowledge and illumination. Above her right thigh rests a bushel of corn, symbol of the great fertility of the American continent. The hieroglyphs on her seat allude to the ancient civilizations of the Americas. We see an eagle, national emblem of the United States. You also see, wearing a warrior's headdress, the representation of a Native American. To her left, under her protection, a male figure, kneeling and mostly nude, tending to a small winged wheel. This is the winged wheel of the god Mercury, and it symbolizes progress. The next sculpture is Europe. She sits majestically in a throne covered with a voluminous drapery, back straight and crowned head held high looking ahead. Looking at the throne itself, to the left we see a relief referencing an ancient frieze from the Parthenon. Behind the figure, the throne turns into the front of a ship with a Roman imperial eagle perched above it. 
Her left arm is resting on top of a book which is itself on top of a globe of the earth. This visual vocabulary alludes to European civilization being the formulator of civilized culture. On the other side, we see an old woman, covered in a long cape, reading from a book and holding a laurel-crowned skull with her right hand. This symbolizes the acquisition of knowledge thanks to those who generated it but are no longer alive. Cass Gilbert called Europe an imperial figure of the highest intelligence. Next to Europe, to the far right, we see Africa. She is shown sleeping, seated on a chair of rocks. Her hair is in a long braid that comes down to her left shoulder. We see her half nude, with fabric only covering her lower body. Her right arm rests on top of a sphinx. If you look to the right, we see a lion. The lion's left front paw rests on top of half a representation of the wings of Isis, ancient Egyptian goddess and patroness of nature and magic. If you visit New York, come and check out this building. There is a lot more to see. Thank you for your attention. For more videos, visit 5dguide.com. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel for automatic updates. Until next time.